This webinar, Common Ground, Reading Recovery, and the Common Core Standards, is a possible companion to the article by the same title that appears in the spring 2013 issue of the Journal of Reading Recovery. My name is Jeff Williams, and I am a K-12 literacy coach for the Solon City Schools. And I'm also currently a Reading Recovery Teacher Leader for the Solon, Ohio Reading Recovery Site. In 2009 and 2010, I was asked to chair a committee on behalf of the National Council of Teachers of English to provide feedback to the Common Core Standards developers. During that time, as you can imagine, I got an in-depth perspective of these standards, and it's this perspective that is currently proving very valuable to me as I work with classroom teachers to prepare them for implementation of the standards in our district. Because of my deep commitment and involvement with reading recovery, I hope to share some insights from these experiences that pertain directly to reading recovery teachers and teacher leaders. The major points I hope to cover in the webinar include the overall structure of the Common Core Standards, the role of comprehension and meaning, the role of informational text, the increased importance of writing, and issues surrounding text complexity. Mari Clay, the founder of Reading Recovery, wrote in 2002 that in order for a reading program to have continued success, we need experienced teachers who know a great deal about literacy development, but that they must also understand the literacy issues of the day and the particular programs that the school is delivering. It is for these reasons that this webinar has been designed for reading recovery teachers, teacher leaders, university trainers, school administrators, classroom teachers, and other professionals to be able to increase our understanding of the literacy issues of today, namely the Common Core Standard Movement, and how reading recovery continues to be a viable part in the midst of such changes. One of the first things that we need to understand is the overarching design of the Common Core Standards in general, and more specifically for Grade 1. For instance, the standards themselves are divided into four basic sections, reading, writing, speaking, and listening, and language. The reading section is further divided into three different strands, one for literature, in which there are nine standards, one for informational text, in which there are ten standards in Grade 1, and a foundational strand in which there are four standards. Writing has seven standards for grade one, and speaking and listening has six. The language strand crosses all other areas, reading, writing, and listening, and speaking, because the developers put such things as knowledge of conventions of grammar, spelling, and other parts into a broadband that's meant to always be in support of the other strands. In total, there are 41 standards for grade one across all these areas. In an observation survey of early literacy achievement, Mari Clay delineated the types of information that all readers use to carry out the complex task of reading, which can be seen in the left-hand column of the chart on the screen. These eight kinds of information can be used to categorize most of the standards for grade one shown on the right side of this chart. In fact, of the 41 standards for grade one, greater than 90% show alignment to reading recovery teaching and practices. Any reading of these standards shows very clearly that comprehension is no longer just one of the five priorities. Phonemic awareness, phonics, fluency, vocabulary, and comprehension that constituted previous standards under No Child Left Behind. It is very important for reading recovery and allied professionals to understand that comprehension and meaning making are very privileged in the Common Core Standards, a development which is welcome news. As we help students who take very different roads to literacy learning, we have always kept Clay's words about comprehension as a signpost in these individual journeys, namely that comprehension lies in what learners say, what is read to them, and what they read and write, and that learners should know that all literacy acts involve comprehension. On a daily basis, we do very important work to develop comprehension. We support and develop comprehension as children listen to our text introductions that teach about text structures, model book language, describe layout and text features. We also 
teach and prompt for the use of different sources of information, in which meaning is a very important source. We also engage and talk about books after reading and about children's lives throughout the lesson to develop comprehension and meaning. We use meaning and what is interesting to the child as the basis of composing in writing. And we teach prompt and scaffold for the development of self-extending systems in both reading and writing that will continue a child's journey towards comprehension and meaning. How does this look in practical terms? To explore this, we'll focus on Reading for Literature, Standard 9, for first grade, which says compare and contrast the adventures and experiences of characters and stories, something that is easily fostered by the variety of series books in a typical reading recovery collection. For example, in the introductions before reading, or in conversations after reading, or when writing about reading, teachers and students could easily compare how Baby Bear provided food in different ways for his family across texts, or how the Hungry Giant acted differently toward the townspeople. Another important factor that the Common Core Standard encourages is a more extensive use of informational text for K-12 classrooms. Though reading recovery professionals would be wise to review and perhaps update current book collections, most should recognize that in fact from the earliest levels to the mid-levels and to later levels, we have long been using informational text in reading recovery lessons. Another important development from the Common Core Standards is the increased focus on writing, again a welcome development for reading recovery professionals. This is important to us because, for several decades now, Clay and Reading Recovery has emphasized the important role that writing plays in reading development, speaking of this connection as reciprocity. This slide represents a sampling of statements written by Clay that illustrate how important writing is to reading development and vice versa. Though Clay has long emphasized the importance of writing instruction, she also cautioned us rather fortuitously as reading recovery professionals saying, as more attention to early writing in classrooms raises school's expectations of children's written language performance, Reading recovery teachers will need to keep an eye on the writing children are expected to do in the classrooms. This is good advice and something that we should really take to heart. The Common Core Standards in particular call for all students, kindergarten through 12th grade, to be able to write extensively across three kinds of writing, argument and opinion writing, informational writing or informative writing, and narrative writing. Again, in practice, this is something that informed reading recovery teachers can do quite effectively, as is shown in this simple opinion piece, which easily meets the grade one standards of giving a simple opinion supported by a reason, in which this student wrote, I like going shopping with grandma because she's nice and she buys me stuff even when I don't ask her. We also often have children engage in informational writing about a topic of interest to them, either from books we have read or from their classrooms or real life. And here's a narrative example composed over a period of five days that is entirely aligned to the grade one standards for narrative. On day one, the student wrote, we got ready for our cruise, we got on a big ship. Day two, we looked around the ship and we ate lunch. Day three, I went swimming in the pool and in the ocean. On day four, she wrote, when I went snorkeling, I saw fish, some were blue, some were purple. And on day five, an effective conclusion, I was happy when I was home. We had a good vacation. To further maximize the use of writing time within the lesson framework, reading recovery professionals might begin by revisiting important sections in literacy lessons designed for individuals parts one and two with colleagues to explore Clay's emphasis on increasing our expectations about the complexity of writing we expect from students and how writing should change over time across a series of lessons. Recent emphasis has been placed in professional development for reading recovery teachers about the fact that in later lessons, children should write more, composing two or three sentences and extending longer messages and writings over several days. And we might be further helped by asking for classroom samples 
of the kinds of writing that average grade one students are doing, and then analyzing these pieces and exploring how our students could be supported within the lesson framework. Now the issues covered so far are fairly straightforward in nature and implication. However, the issues of text complexity require much more scrutiny and understanding, especially during this transition period to the Common Core. One particularly confusing and somewhat contentious issue regards text complexity. For example, some people reading the standards have incorrectly interpreted that all students must read quote-unquote grade-level material from the start of grade one, something stated in some other standards for other grade levels. But a closer look at what Appendix A of the Common Core Standard says about Grade 1 classrooms suggests differently, saying that K-1 texts are not amenable to quantitative measure. Furthermore, students in those grades are acquiring the code at varied rates. Hence, the standard's text complexity requirements begin formally with Grade 2. This definitely suggests that actually we are not to be using a one-size-fits-all approach. So in a related or connected issue is the mistaken idea that students would be required to do whole group reading of the same at grade level text material rather than matching text to readers. But again a closer look, this time at a footnote within the Common Core document itself, suggests otherwise. As stated earlier, because children progress at different rates, the Common Core says children at the kindergarten and grade one levels should be expected to read texts independently that have been specifically written to correlate to their reading level and their word knowledge. This practice is well understood and employed by reading recovery teachers as an essential element of successfully developing competence in reading. And finally is the issue of scaffolding. With so much attention to the need for students to read increasingly more complex texts, some people have wrongly interpreted this to mean that we simply put hard books into every child's hands and reading achievement will magically rise. But again, a careful reading, even at grade levels where materials are expected to be sufficiently complex, the standards writers built into the standards that scaffolding is appropriate. For instance, look at the reading standard for grade two, which says, by the end of the year, Students will read and comprehend literature and informational text in the grades 2 through 3 text complexity band proficiently, with scaffolding as needed at the higher end of the range. The authors further emphasize the general need for scaffolding, again in Appendix A, saying, the expectation that scaffolding will occur with particularly challenging texts is built into the standards grade-by-grade -grade text complexity expectations. The important points that can be easily missed when looking at the Common Core Standards are that texts selected should increase in complexity over time, and that matching students to instructional level text is an expectation for reading development. And finally, though scaffolding is both warranted and necessary, the goal is to decrease scaffolding while increasing student independence over time. Again, all of these issues, uh, these concepts, are fundamental to reading recovery and many quality classroom practices as well and will continue to be important in implementing the Common Core State Standards, especially in Grade 1. Again, to reiterate why it's important for reading recovery professionals to pay attention to the Common Core State Standard movement and why it's important today, we review Clay's writing from 2001 where she has made several important points to consider. Point one, lifting the average scores in schools will increase rather than decrease the need for early intervention. Point two, school improvement programs designed for success will unquestionably create larger gaps between those who can easily meet the challenges and those who have several counts against them when it comes to school learning. And point three, higher general levels of achievement will create larger gaps between the average and the lowest achievers in literacy acquisition unless special measures are put into place. In fact, Clay designed the reading recovery framework to be used flexibly, stating in 1998 that our lessons could easily be adapted to individual differences, returning a child to any classroom program, and be able to adjust the teaching to different needs of ESL children and other special cases. 
this idea of returning a child to any classroom program is particularly important when thinking about the Common Core and the kinds of classroom programs that children are going to be returning to, our lesson framework is adaptable enough that we can change to meet this challenge. And as stated earlier by Clay, as achievement expectations in classrooms are raised, early intervention programs will continue to be important or may even become more necessary. In fact, the Federal Department of Education has recently awarded Reading Recovery some $46 million in an effort to scale up reading recovery across the country over a five-year period. This effort is well underway and for good reason. Reading Recovery has a strong track record of supporting students across many different settings with over two million children served successfully. There's a growing body of research that continues to document our successes. This research can be reviewed on the What Works Clearinghouse website, the National Center on Response to Intervention website, and the National Center on Intensive Intervention website. For more information about receiving funds to implement reading recovery in your district or school, please visit the Reading Recovery website at www.readingrecovery.org. Thank you.